Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger, and my show today will be featuring Hillis Pugh, who is a soul mentor and energy facilitator. You're going to want to stick around because Hillis has agreed to give us all a transmission and a healing during this show, and I wouldn't miss that for the world. Dare to Dream has been nominated for Two People's Choice Podcasts Award for a Webby Award, is listed in Welp Magazine as one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to, and just returned from Denver, where I won the Coalition of Visionary Resources Best Radio and Podcast Show Award. Thank you to all of you for your commitment to your journey, metaphysically, ascension-wise, and for being here. And I love your comments, by the way. Thank you. I know you know that I read them. So thanks for being with us. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here in Access Consciousness. They do energy work out in the world. If you'd like to become a facilitator or take one of their classes, go to Dr. Dane here, H-E-E-R dot com or Access Consciousness. Dot com. I'm Debbie Dashinger, and I'm a visibility media expert, and I help you become more visible because light workers, you came here to do just that. Whatever you got to heal to get there, that's the deal. So to become more visible, I help you write a highly engaging book. I do that through private lessons as well as through group ongoing Zooms twice a month from anywhere in the world. I've got a company that takes your book to a guaranteed international bestseller, and I do all the heavy lifting for the author. And the third wheel of what I do is how to be interviewed on radio and podcasts and get massive results. I show you an entire system. Don't tell anyone, but you won't have to hire a publicist when I work with you. And it's a beautiful system, and it frees you up to be seen exponentially. So I also have a free gift for you if you'd like to learn how to do this, how to be this out of the world, how to free yourself up in the visibility space. I give you templates and videos to get you there. Go to debbiedashinger.com slash gift. D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R dot com slash gift. Today we're going to be working together in universal sync of exploration of your inner space. My guest is Hillis Pugh, who's an author, teacher, speaker, and holistic practitioner. Hillis is one of 15 certified Lumerian light workers on the planet. And this is exactly why I wanted him on the show. I was fascinated. Hillis offers his work to guide others on their path and let them know they're not alone. Hillis Pugh has taught his gratitude and law of attraction seminars at the Edgar Casey Center, New York City, Well Set, Ken Show Health, Maha Rose, Lightning Society, Breaking Boundaries, and other locations in the New York area. He's spoken at the Holistic Chamber of Commerce, New York, New Life Expo, Gratitude Migration, and other events and virtual platforms, and has partnered with WeWork New York for in-person psychic events. Hillis mentors each soul on their path to lift them up so they can see what he sees beyond the physical realm. He's an energy facilitator working with modalities such as psychic mediumship, Reiki, and Lemurian light energy to co-create a deeper connection to the soul. The power to nurture and transform people's lives is what motivates Hillis to fulfill his purpose. And if you'd like to find out more about him, go to taplink.cc slash Hillis Pugh, and it's H-I-L-L-I-S-P-U-G-H. And I welcome Hillis to the Dare to Dream show. Yay, it is great to have you here. (laughs) Oh my goodness, Debbie, thank you so much for allowing me to be in this space, to share the space with you and your audience and to just simply be, because I think that's where we are right now on the planet is, you know, there's a lot of doing and a lot happening, but not enough being right now. And, you know, the past few weeks of my personal life has really helped me to move more to a space of being, you know, because as energy workers on the planet, we are always doing, 
but now it's time to be. Okay, so inquiring minds want to know, Hillis, when you say that, why? What's happened to you in your life in the past couple of weeks that has created this change, this redirection? Well, you know, being one who is a sole proprietor, an entrepreneur, you're always doing something, always promoting, always something. There's nothing, there's no time, <laughs> nothing, where nothing is being done. Yeah. And so uh, my Facebook account was hacked. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, and so you know, it kind of like you know, I was in the the energy of I gotta get my account back. What am I gonna do? And so just in this space of you know messaging and talking with Facebook, and nothing's getting done over there, and then nothing's getting done over here, and it's like, oh my goodness, what am I gonna do? And it, like, it was like this for like a few days. I'm like, you know what? It's okay. Hmm it's okay for me not to have my Facebook account because people who need me are going to find me. My clients don't have to get a hold of me. And it's like, oh, yeah, you're right. I don't need Facebook. <laughs> I don't need that. So, and so it, it just allowed me to, to remove myself from the space of being reactionary to a space of just being and just allowing for me to center in the energy and learn what I needed to learn in this space. I mean, that never, I never would have thought me getting hacked, why? And so yeah. it's like, eh, you know what happens. And you're back up now? No. <laughs> Are they working on it for you? I have no idea. I sent them what they what needed to be sent and Mm. But but I uh, wow. to find out that I talked to a friend of mine, I think it was yesterday, two days ago. And she explained to me how this is more of an energetic thing with me. So I've been moving into a new energetic space with this and knowing that it's already resolved and taken care of, which I already know, but now it's mm. moving into that space completely and wholly knowing that everything is taken care of. I know it is for you as well. I have had so many friends this has happened to and it's reported and I don't know what the timeline is, but then all of a sudden you do get an you get something from them saying, so sorry, I was hacked, I'm back, etc. So yeah, I see that for you as well. And it just reminds me, you know, and this is uh, maybe the biggest life lesson for me constantly, what you're referring to is literally going with the flow and it's so easy to say those words and sound so hippified and cool like yeah man let go surrender but for someone like me who's on top of everything yeah. when things happen and this plan a was supposed to go down this track and suddenly something else happens it's it can be mystifying to me um especially as a metaphysician who gets in there and makes things happen but you know, letting go and trusting a divine plan, it's amazing. It's amazing because often in that widened back space, we can create something wholly different we wouldn't have. For instance, if, if you were still on Facebook, this other thing that you allow yourself to be created or to be wouldn't have happened. So exactly. it is a, it's a really beautiful, it's a really weird and beautiful journey, right? <laughs> It is, and, and what I find about all of this, and, and so this is just an instance with me. And when I look at the larger collective picture, it is more so how we can all receive something from this and how we are conditioned the actionary being. People in action continuously constantly, whether if we are on, on social media, texting somebody, calling somebody, doing something, finding something to watch. We're always in the space of doing, but we have forgotten how to simply be. Yeah. And so sometimes it's okay if I allow myself to simply uh, get up in the morning and stay in my bed and meditate in my bed. Uh, I mean, seriously, I, I do that. I say, it's like 5, 30, 6 o'clock in the morning. I don't feel like getting up. And this is when I step into one of my, my meditation practices. 
I just want to do my thank you rampage of saying thank you for this bed that I have to lay on. Thank you for this pillow that I have to sleep on. Thank you for this home that I have to live in. Thank you for, the, you know, and I just go on in this space to jumpstart my day. Then it's when it's time for me to get up, I'm like, okay, I can get up now and I can move forward in my day. Well, I'm really curious. I mean, I loved a lot of things in your bio. Mm -hmm. And when I received your pitch, that's what really spoke to me. I mean, the amalgam of who you are and what you practice, I'm very curious about. But I've never heard of Lemurian Lightworker. And I, it's so deep right now. I, that keeps, I know all about it. I've been told that I'm originally from Moo. Probably most of us here right now are. And what is that? Like how, first of all, how did that manifest? And how do you practice that? How do you tap into Lemurian energy or healing in order to facilitate? And so just real quick about my own personal journey. My journey began back in 2008 when I really began to learn about gratitude and then merging it with the synergistic and symbiotic relationship with the law of attraction and learning that the law of attraction is uh, a, a branch from the spiritual law, the law of vibration. So I began to teach and speak that and I'm like, okay, I'm learning all of this, but there's something more. So I then went to school to hone my psychic abilities where my, so I know I'm clear audience. So I hear before I, I see or feel. I'm like, okay, this is cool. I honed my psychic abilities. What's next? And then I started taking level one Reiki. And I'm like, oh, this is cool. I need to work with, with elemental energy symbols. Oh, yeah, this is cool. Okay, what's next? And then as I was going for my level two certification, I found my teacher on Facebook, coincidentally. <laughs> um, and he, there was this really amazing post talking about Lemurian like energy and how he could help people, you know, remove trauma, shame, pain, guilt, whatever, all this stuff that we hold on to. And I'm like, this is what I need. This is what's going to help enable me to be of service to other people. And so the process was a close to eight eight month process for me to learn uh, to, to put all my own stuff first and foremost before I can even be attuned to this energy because you have to be completely clear of your own stuff. Not saying that there's going to be residual stuff later, but it allowed me and enabled me to be this vessel to harness this Lamorian light energy. And those who are watching, yes, there are plenty of, of other people who speak that they count on energy from Lamorian. Not saying that most of us can't, it's just that the way that I do it is different from what anyone else. And what makes me different, and I'm able to uh, pull energy from Sirius A, B, and C, galactic energies. I'm able to utilize elemental energies. I'm able to utilize earth energies, able to utilize even what some people may consider harmful energy, such as 5G radiation or microwave energies. I'm able to harness those energies and transmute them and repurpose them. I'm able to, to utilize energy as, in ways that it hasn't been thought of because energy is energy. It's just our thought and how they're to be utilized or able to transform them in a whole new way. So that's how I've allowed myself to be this this vessel to be of service to other people. Yes. Wow, there was a lot in there, and I yeah. I love that. So, what is it like to be you? When let's say you were working with me, and we're going to do a session. What is it you see? What is it you're able to access? What's what is it like for you in your space? Well, being one who is an energy facilitator and architect, my visions of what I see is slightly different from what the client sees. And as I create this container, it is, especially since we're, most of the people I work with is distant. And so the energy that I see in them is anywhere from their child self or to an energetic version of who they are. And sometimes I even see their own thoughts of instances of moments in their life to where the trauma or abuse has occurred. May I ask you, is it like if you've ever had a soul retrieval, a shamanic soul retrieval? 
And uh, me, per per me personally, I have, and I also do those. Oh, that's powerful. Those are amazing. Oh, wow. And, and, and I have to preface this by saying anyone who sees anyone uh, that does soul retrieval, you have to be very mindful about who you choose to do this. Always. Because th there, they could be done improperly to where, not saying that this ever happened, but there may be incomplete parts or things or energies attached to whatever if it's not cleared properly. But to to get into your to answer your question even more to to who how does it how does it feel to be me honestly I I no one's have ever asked me that so so how it feels to be me doing the work that I do it feels good it feels mm. transformation that I'm holding someone's hand mm. in the process of their personal evolution and so I guess it just feels darn good to to be this person that is able to do that for other people. Oh. It's beautiful. And the other thing is you talk about the power of plant medicine. Hello, Hollis. Oh. Let's talk. So what is, I know what it is, but anyway, <laughs> for the sake of posterity, for you, what is the power of plant medicine? Oh my goodness. Uh, you're talking about, so basically plant medicine to me is one of the greatest teachers hmm. ever. I mean, I can do what the energy work that I do because of plant medicine. I can do everything because of that. Because, you know, I've been doing plant medicine for eight plus years now. Wow. Yeah, I've done over 50, maybe even close to a hundred ceremonies. And I have my own shaman, he's like a brother to me. Mm -hmm. uh, the way he trusts me and I trust him in, in this space. And, and when you're in the space, you have this has to be this element of trust, so it won't work. But plant medicine is the divine teacher of the planet. Mm -hmm. The divine, and we talk about Mother Earth. You know, we talk about how Mother Earth teaches us in all these different ways, but have that true connection. That's the connection because she mm -hmm. shows you and she speaks to you in a way that you can understand or maybe challenging to receive the message because it can be because of our own human stubbornness. But it's just the the magnificent journey that we allow ourselves to go on. And I've had, <laughs> I've had many, many journeys. <laughs> How do you set an intention before you drink? What, do you, what is, do you have a protocol how you decide what you're going to ask in or do you just say to the plant you know give me what i need or how do you handle that part well it's, it's interesting there have been, I've, I've done both and you know there have been many times where it's like a day prior a week prior even months prior and my intention has always been set to you know, I want to help clear this from my field, or I want to help to clear this from my body, mm. uh, and things just begin to show up. But what I want people to understand is that it's not just the moment before you uh, take the medicine to your lips, or the day or week prior. It, the intention often begins the moment you decide <laughs> you want to partake in this magnificent restoration of your being, because that's what it is. I mean, it's restoring us to our hum humanity, to our human design of that blueprint. Well, I love that. Yeah, I'm gonna be drinking again at the end of next month. So- um, Are you doing it in where you are? Are you going to South America? No, I'm doing it here. I've done it several places. I've done it in Costa Rica and so forth. Um, this one just came into our space and um, they're very talented at certain things. So I'm, I'm curious. It's nice. I think also to drink with new people and find different new homes Family. and groups. How do you deal with the taste? That's so difficult <laughs> for me. It's like, Ugh. well, see, that's the thing. Everyone prepares it differently. And most of the shamans that I know put honey in it and and everyone prepares a little bit differently. I tell you that 
the first few times, it was definitely a taste of getting used to. But now it's like, if anyone ever remembers having castor oil when they were kids, <laughs> it's almost, it reminds me like, not, not the taste, but the experience. You know you don't want to take it, but you know it's good for you. <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> oh, my God, mister. Okay, I'm going to think about that. Oh, man. It's so that part is very hard for me. Got to do the mints and the whole deal. And I have, I'm, I'm a baby. I got to hold my nose. And well, well, the, thing, the thing is, and I guess what makes it easy, because my shaman, they kind of send like a chaser around with it. So they, they do the ayahuasca, and then the, the chaser is a San Pedro tea. I haven't yeah. even heard of that. I mean, I've done San Pedro, but not the tea. Wow. Yeah, they, they make a tea out of San Pedro. So it's like, so when I sit with my shamans, we we uh, do what he calls a Mason Dina, or which is loosely translated to the medicine of the Andes. And so it's four mm -hmm. medicines we, we see in one night. Mm -hmm. uh, ayahuasca being one, apparently, San Pedro, mm -hmm. uh, mushrooms, and uh, peyote, grandfather medicine. So we receive all four medicines in one night. Whoa. Yeah. What is that like? Now, mind you, because when I started my journey, I was doing maybe eight, 10 hour, you know, nights. With him, it's easily 12, if not 14. Because what I appreciate is that how he tells you a story about each medicine and why each medicine and how they and why they work together, which is why it's called it the medicine of the Andes, because these four medicines have a particular medicinal purpose for each aspect of the being, for each aspect of your soul. And so the culmination of that gets to this point of the night, this crescendo to what. Uh, my shaman often refers to as uh, the walk of power or the time of power of the night, because at this time you've already mm. had like maybe two other medicines and never and everything never goes in order. Nothing is ever in order. Things just flow as they flow. And so when you get to this 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 point of the night to where you're in a full immersion of your power of really seeing yourself and honoring yourself and seeing yourself on the soul level. Mm -hmm. And just for for uh, story purposes, you know, the last time I did medicine was in September of 2021. I was there for, for five weeks. So I started at the uh, beginning of September, didn't leave till the first week of October. And one of the last uh, ceremonies, I literally felt my body being blown up from the inside out, like I was just like, boom, everything was just open. And then I had to learn how to put myself back together on a cellular level. And everything that I've learned in that time, in that moment, has assisted and translated into helping my clients mm -hmm. and how to blow them up figuratively. <laughs> And I have been putting themselves back together, not in the same instance of, of me at that not in that moment, but it's showed me all these different ways and that we hold on to stuff in every area of our body, in every single aspect of our cell. And it helped me to see myself on a cellular level that that even in that cell, that there's such a grand universe. And in that universe, there's all this information that we're holding, not just in this life, but lives before and then other species and this whole other dynamic that is just remarkable and so yeah it, it's it's a beautiful experience do you have favorite plants do you have particular plants that you resonate with the most no i don't there i resonate with it all only because each one is a teacher now each one has a significant uh, space, but I'm going, I guess I guess I kind of fibbed there a little bit. I guess I kind of like the ayahuasca the best mother herself because there's such a lesson in what she teaches, and I know that every time when I when I connect with her, that there is uh, another level of evolution for myself personally, and I know that once you ingest her, that she never leaves, right. always with you. I'm like there's this this unseen thread that's like 
when you need to go for a visit. It's like, okay, I need to come and see you now. How how do we facilitate a visitation? And so, you know, that aspect is pretty cool also. Well, yeah, we all know that when we drink, the plant doesn't leave us, which is really beautiful when you think yes. about it. Yes. This natural, organic, ancient, ancient tool that is used by people so far long before us who knew about it, that's still used in indigenous jungles and so forth. It's just part of their culture. Mm -hmm. And here we are now, you know, we've been turned on to it at a time we probably really need to be using it. But it makes me curious hearing you say that, Hillis, if the plant in me recognizes the plant in you, if somehow there's something that can connect, that says, I, I see you, that back to me, I see you, that there's something energetic just because the plants exist in us now. Yeah. You know, and I think there's, there's a lot of truth to that. I mean, and, and, and it's interesting because you can tell there's like a, a, a certain energy that I've learned to pick up on those who have sat with her before. And you could tell those who haven't. And it, it, it's, it's just this resonance, this feel. I'm like, yeah, I know you, but also too on on a broader scale that you know people you know sometimes often misuse the term I see you, and and so I don't want people to misunderstand that you know when people say I see you, it's also in, in the resonance of the field of how people are now learning to reconnect not just with other people but also with themselves and i feel that's what it's also about too people also now being a mirror for one another mm. well i'd love you if you have a poem i would love to hear one of your poems because uh, i honor poetry <laughs> very much and um acquiring minds want to know and hear Yes, and, and I will tell you that I don't have much of my recent poetry published uh, because I write, you know, consistently. I do have one ready for you and your audience, and this is something that I've written uh, within the past year, and I felt it was um, very appropriate for today. Mm, nice. And so the name of this uh, piece is called Allowance. Mm. Coming into awareness, noticing self, the movement, the energy, the subtleties, fulfilling the promise of self, the agreement made forever infinite, simply being the ascension, learning about the self imposed, being beyond feeling there is more, knowing I am the all. The awareness is the remembering, and I am the remembering, allowing to remember, allowing to know, allowing the wisdom, vessel floating freely, understanding the flow, granted permission, the great allowing, the great awareness, all is as it is, open receive that is allowance mm. Mm. what well, that actually is so perfect <laughs> for the conversation we've been having and for the energy right now thank you so much always reminders to allow to receive to be to flow oh <laughs> so thank you yeah that was really nice and i know you do you've got courses around gratitude Yes. And you talk about this symbiotic relationship between the law of attraction and gratitude. Talk yes. about that. And then how do we manifest with gratitude? What's the secret there? You know, what is really magical about this is, you know, about how us people, us humans, always like to overcomplicate things and words and situations and instances. It's much simpler than that. And how the beginnings of this, as I talked about earlier, is that sometimes how I just want to stay in bed and do my thank you meditation. You know, I often teach people and call it my thank you rampage. Well, I well, I start off with this affirmation saying I'm happy and grateful for, you know, me just having a bed or ha I'm happy and grateful for having a toothpaste and toothbrush to brush my teeth. 
And we often try to make things a a bit more complex, you know, because when we often think of the word gratitude, we often think of us making it through a particular challenge in our life, you know, getting over something. But if we head it off at the curb and start expressing gratitude and appreciation for what we already have and what's going on, we then can move into the space of uh, appreciation. And then in that instance, we grow into materializing more of that. Because when we say the words, thank you, people just think of it as a simple mannerism or being polite. When it also too is also an offering or a prayer, you know, it's also in that same energy. And so when you have this offering or prayer being sent to the universe, Mm -hmm. the universe hears this energy, it feels this frequency, it feels this vibration. It's like, oh, well, this person is is in a higher frequency of a vibration let's give them more of that to be happy for to be grateful for to appreciate in their lives and so it's this reciprocal process of us expressing our joy for what we have and the universe sending it back down to us giving us more to be thankful for than us saying thank you for delivering this to me now can i get more of that please you know so it's like in, in this relationship and so that's what it is because us being happy and thankful and if we are in that same vibration of frequency and alignment, we then can allow ourselves to be to uh, to receive, to be recipients of what we are, are asking for. So it's this uh, cy- never-ending cycle, if you will. I hope that makes sense. It does. It does. I loved what you said. I wrote that down. An offering. Thank you is an offering or a prayer. Yes. Yeah. So what about the law of vibration? How does that work? Well, how I often teach people is this is a simple formula that I came up with that helps to explain it in, in the terms that we can understand. Because we have the word, we have our thoughts that are neutral, that we have, have our emotions or feelings that fuel the thought. So imagine that the thought is a car in your driveway, in part, not going anywhere. And then you have the feelings or emotions, which is the gas for the car, which is the thought. So now you got the fuel, but it still doesn't have any direction, any guidance, right? And so then you have the words, which are written or spoken, give the car the direction to go into reverse, then to go forward in the direction that you want it to go in, and which materializes the end point, which is the, the manifestation, which is the desire that you are wanting for yourself. So just to quickly recap, you have your uh, thoughts, which is the car, the feelings and emotions, which is the gas for the car, and then the words are written or spoken gives the car the direction. So you're in the driver's seat, and then you're being in this driver's seat, you give it this direction to end up where you need to go. Will you give us an example? So let's say there's something that you or a client, doesn't matter, it could be a fake mm-hmm. example, but something you want to create. Give us an example. Take us through using gratitude, how you would manifest it specifically. Well, so, as you know, it's pretty simple. You know, it's all about first understanding what it is you want to materialize in your life, to manifest. And you have a uh, affirmation and the affirmation is the i am statement using the two most powerful words in the universe i am to start the engine if you will of this manifestation process and you say i am happy and grateful for meaning that and are you choosing those words specifically because yes you're allowing yourself to step into the frequency of happiness and joy and the energy of appreciation at the same time. So I am happy and grateful for filling the blank. And you have that energy set there for you. And it is in that space to then you can fill in the blank with whatever you want to move forward in the direction of materializing, you know, a better life, a better job, a better partner, or just to sustain what you have already. 
and to allow more to continue to sustain what you have. And so it is in that that vibration, that resonance, that we allow ourselves to, to uh, be in that energy. And yes, people probably say, well, what if that's not working for me? What if that's, that's not, you know, what if I'm not getting the results? Well, if you're not getting the results, then you have to look at your, your energetic feeling, how you're feeling in the moment. Are you genuinely feeling that you are meant to have this? Are you genuinely feeling that in the space of happiness or joy, are you in that field of resonance? Because all it takes are 17 sacred increments to create something. Can you just imagine in 17 seconds, increments of 17 seconds, you can just say, I'm happy and grateful that I have this house. I'm happy and grateful that I'm living in this house. I'm happy and grateful that I'm living in my new home. Can you imagine saying that for 17 seconds and getting in that higher frequency of it? And then once you get into that, and what I've noticed about myself and with my clients is that when we start off with one information and we hold it in that 17 seconds, it automatically changes into something else. It changes, it is, and not into something else completely, it changes into another frequency. And instead of saying, I'm happy and grateful for this house, it could be, I'm happy and grateful for, you know, this mansion. I don't know, whatever the next elevation is of that. But it, it just, because you're in that field, the universe accommodates you to lift you up into a high frequency. With that, I would love you to take us through some kind of healing. Um, and if you don't mind, Hillis, will you explain what's going on? And if you're engaged in the healing, I don't know if when you do your work, if you check in or can let us know what you're seeing or, you know, whatever's going on in your space that you perceive, I would be very curious as well as receiving your gift but to also understand at the same time a little bit what's going on or if you notice anything that you want to address, um, I'd love it if you take us through Beautiful. something. And so I just want to share with everyone really quick uh, one of the tools that I use. And this guy here is a Lemurian healing rod. There's only one person on the planet who makes these. And if anyone is a, is a healer, you can let me know. Um, but her name is Phyllis Douglas, and I can get, put you in touch with her. This is one of the, this is the tool that I use, one of the most amazing things that I've ever used in my life. And it's uh, her, uh, she's the only one who makes it. I haven't seen anyone else make this particular one. But, um, and so as I as I allow myself to begin. Uh, if you're watching this now in the future, just allow yourself to relax and allow yourself to kind of drift off a little bit as I do, as I bring in energies, allow my awareness to shift, opening up the portals of energy. We go E, he told. Um, she must see. And as I say these words, it allows me to open up other energies to access other dimensional spaces, other times, other frequencies to bring in the desired energy for this moment. And the energy that I'm feeling for this moment that is asking to be assisted is for the energy on the planet to assist the collective in. Uh, releasing whatever guilt and shame that they're holding on to in the collective space, the anger of these uncertain times. And if you also may notice, uh, Debbie, that there's also been a shift in the octave or tonality of my voice. And this is often when the energy has allowed themselves to move uh, through to have a deeper resonance and deeper go to allow the energy to open and to be received. Allow this voice of the universe to uh, calm others and allow them to be more relaxed, to be more open as this energy of the universe uh, is now open. 
And in this moment, I call for the nameless like creator's like of energy and the energy of his love, Mother Earth herself, to allow these loving parents, the parents of this universe of our planet, to feel the space of those watching this now or later, to feel the love, to feel the love being sent with this nameless light, this beautiful white light that is being beamed down to you, to your presence, and use you allow yourself to be open to receive, to receive this tremendous heart opening to dissolve the anger, to dissolve the hatred, of the uncertainty that fills your heart, to allow yourself to find your direction, to find your purpose, and to know who you are, to where you sit, in your in your space, in your dwelling, and not just the dwelling of your home or which you reside, but the dwelling of your body, the dwelling of your true home, and this vessel that you contain in this moment. <sighs> Bringing more white light in, allowing this white light to transmit it for me to those who are watching who feel the energy uh, bouncing off of me, coming through me to you, to them, and just being this vessel of bringing in this energy of unconditional love, unconditional love that is open and up in our hearts. Shang Sai Mu, Shang Sai Mu Ra. And if you are able to hear any of the other words, it is light language uh, that I am connected to and particular light language symbols that are utilized in the opening of this space of delivering this energy to you to be felt to open and free and clear energetic field of the anger, the collective anger, the collective disappointment, the collective uh, low of our energies and frequencies that is holding us in this pattern and not allowing ourselves to evolve. And as we allow these energies to go, allow these energies to be free, we then allow ourselves to be open and receptive more. As we release the old, we welcome the new. We release the old and we welcome the new creating a new cycle, creating a new space, allowing our dwelling, our body to welcome the love, to welcome the joy of the creator's light and Sophia's love, allowing these energies to harmonize with us, welcome us back home. And in this moment, just allow ourselves to feel the love of self, to stand the love of self and knowing that you are well, that you are perfect. And yes, we go through trials and experiences, but these experiences are meant for self evolution and to be the teacher and the student and the mirror for those who are in your area and your surroundings. Because we are always infinite teachers and infinite students, always teaching and learning at the same time. And in this moment, allow yourself to be both yourself to understand and know and utilize your experience, your experience as this being that is before you allows himself to be a teacher and a student to you, allowing this gift of energy, wisdom to be shared. And at this moment, you can allow yourself to take a nice big deep breath as we begin to close the energy, close the portals, we go kihi ko on shimasi. Take a deep breath and open your eyes. You are here, you are now, you are present. Oh, wow. Yeah, I can't. I said you are perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that was yummy. Thank you. Yeah. And, um, that was just a short version of that. And it was... I like what, what you asked of me because 
Mm. No one has ever asked that of me before to describe to them what I see and what I felt. So it was in the space of being aware of the transmission mm. and not being aware at the same time. I understand. <laughs> I love the words you used. Sophia. So what is your connection with Sophia and Magdalene? So Sophia, so we know Mother Earth's name to be Gaia. Mm -hmm. But uh, as Gaia, as Mother Earth moves through the third dimension, as she now sits in fourth dimension, uh, she now prefers to be called Sophia or Terra. Mm -hmm. You know, or, you know, Gaia, Terra, Terra. And, and so I always either call her Terra or Sophia. But lately, I've been in the energy of Sophia. So she, when I speak of Sophia, I refer to the Mother Earth herself. But uh, and also to, to answer your question about Mary Magdalene, I know that she is one of the ascended masters. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, one of the few female ascended masters who is here of assistance, assist us, assistance to us that was us all one word in my head just there <laughs> but she is uh helping us uh remembering the unconditional love the great love uh that she has because she is the, the amazing heart opener you know because of what she has experienced and witnessed in her time mm -hmm. and this tool you have from phyllis douglas this beautiful very unique Lovely. healing yeah yeah how do you use that or how does that show up how does that work for us so there are a myriad of tools that i use this is just uh one of my favorites um because it is a tool to me and only to me so no one else can use it number one mm -hmm. number two it's inscribed with light language and the inscriptions are for healing and for transmitting energies and for whatever it is. And so my I name, I'm not going to say the name, but uh, I, I name the healing rod. And so this name also gives it an activation. So it also helps me to connect to the ancestral energies of Lemuria and even beyond all the way going up to Sirius, planet Sirius A, B, and C. Just to give you a little bit further history, I inhabited both Syria, all three planets, actually, at one time, well, at one time or another, you know, Sirius A, you know, Sirius B, and Sirius C, which is the dwarf planet. And this uh, may not, uh, a lot of people may not know, but the Dogon uh, tribe in Africa has a direct connection to Sirius C. So in my own personal self uh, research, I found that I was connected to all three. Oh, wait. So my... that's fascinating to me. So explain that. So there's a tribe in Africa. What's the name of the tribe that's connected? It's called Dogon. It's, a, it's, not, a, it's not many of them left, if at all, at this time. Mm -hmm. But early in the early days, I can't place the date right now, but it was, um, darn it, I wish I, because I want to say after... It was after Sumerian times for sure, um, but I can't quite place the date and time reference in my head because you now time is nothing now. Time is like all at once. <laughs> and you are connected to all three. Yes. So I love that we're also bringing like the UFO, um, other universes into all of this. What is your experience of parallel universes? You know, I feel, and, and this just goes to show you that everything is always happening at once. You know, it doesn't matter where you are, it doesn't matter what dimension you're living in. Even in this present time, everything is happening all at the same time. There's no, oh, that happened then, or that's going to happen, it's all happening now. And so there was a time in my life when my abilities were emerging. And I used to see myself being very clumsy. And I'm like, why am I? 
So why am I having the forethought of me tripping or having the forethought of this happening? And and so a friend of mine at the time said, like, it could be that you're seeing yourself in another space. And I'm like, yeah, but why am I so darn clumsy in this other space? I mean, I just, that's just not me. I mean, I'm not this clumsy. And so, I mean, things exist. And sometimes when we have, uh, these four thoughts, these visions, because at the beginning of the emerging of my abilities, I used to receive a lot of premonitions. And so I just uh, thought that these visions of me being clumsy were premonitions for me to avoid what was going to happen or what could potentially happen. That wasn't always the case. And I'm like, okay, all right. And, and so it's just, you know, when we have these emergencies of our abilities, because that's not what they are, we go through these evolutionary cycles and periods. And so now, you know, whatever it is that people who are watching this, whatever it is that you're feeling right now, just trust and know that this just is the beginning or the middle of you really stepping in and owning your power, whatever it is that you may be feeling for yourself. What do you do every day, Hillis? What what do your practices or protocols that you do every day that keep you healthy and centered and grounded? <laughs> so you know, I take a nap almost every day. Mm -hmm. Um, because you know it helps to reset the brain and to helps to support inflammation. Um, not only that, meditation. You know, I know it sounds so cliche, but it's helpful. I mean, aside from meditation, taking a nap every day and doing my self-checking, you know, seeing how am I feeling today? Do I honor how I feel? You know, am I going to push myself to complete something that, I just, that just doesn't resonate with me? But one of the, honestly, one of the big things that I wish I had it with me to show, uh, but one of the big things, honestly, that really shook up my daily routine, I'm not sure if you've heard of this, but it's a product called ASEA. ASEA. Oh my God. This product like really changed my world. It really has. Um, because it, it helps with a myriad of things. But what I noticed that me being an energy worker, light worker, doing all things energy, the way that I work with energy is much more efficient. Uh, and how I am able to tap in and connect to the space in me and around me to be of service to my clients, to care for them and to be of ser better service to them, which in turn allow me to be a better service to myself. You know, because it's the, the honestly, the, the, the best thing that I do aside from taking that is make sure that I get the proper rest every day. You know, because most people who do the work that I do, you know, especially now with the fluctuation of energies on the planet and the universe, there's always a lot incoming in because I get a lot of downloads with the light language and everything else. Mm -hmm. Rest and hydration is most important. You can go and do whatever you need to do. Or well, what's a SIA? How do you, is this something you take? Is it a oh, pill? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yes, this is a, this is a liquid uh, that I take uh, twice a day. It is um, a saline solution. However, hmm. yeah, it's but but the thing is, what makes it different is the process of what they get to this redox molecule, which is a signaling molecule. So just imagine when you were a kid, you know, five, six, seven years old, you had all this energy, and if you hurt yourself, you were able to heal your body almost instantly. But after puberty. Uh, the signaling molecule dropped in the body. So you're a little bit slower, don't heal as fast. And as you get older, you lose more of these molecules in the body. And so in my own independent research of this product, this product was made to help boost the immune system. And you know, if you have a healthy immune system, everything else is follow suit. It's, it's you know, energetic, so forth and so on. And so you know, when you're like in your 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s and so on, you don't have a lot of this uh, signaling in the body 
to communicate to the body what needs to be repaired or if there's dead cells that need to go. And so it just helps the body to replenish and restore it to its uh, natural health. You know, it's anti-aging, um, you know, and it helps with all things cell. So, I mean, I have, if you wanna know more information about that, it's uh, in my tap link as well. They can <laughs> contact me for a bit too. Beautiful. Wow. So many cool things out there now. It's amazing what's available. It really yeah. is. I, I like that science and health are coming together like this and oh, they're I utilizing, yeah, patches of light and there's all these incredible things. I've that heard of work. those. I haven't got my hands on those yet. Uh, I think they're, I think that was their call because a friend was telling me about them. I think it was, it's funny how things coming to your awareness at the same time yeah. because the patches came in at the same time as the SEA came in. I'm like, which one do I listen to go up with? And so it's, it's all these things. And even I don't know if anyone's ever heard of the Healy before as well. Guess what yeah, I have right well, here. Ta da! Ah, oh, you, you have to get the, um, the wireless attachment. Okay, yeah, thank you so much because Hillis, look how insane I know. I look like I know. a bondage woman I when I do I these. It's, it's like I, I know that's why I, I have I, I have to I, I have to find and show you the the wireless aspect because that's game changing because I got tired of walking around with the <laughs> straps on and I I've broken a couple of glasses because I can the wires in the way. It's like <laughs> And so, so the wireless piece, but yeah, but the thing that I was going to tell because I have a friend of mine who does uh, personal expert frequencies. Mm. There's a couple of frequencies that I utilize in some of my higher end work that I do, uh, which is like the soul retrieval mm. and the soul restoration work that I do. I use the Healy in conjunction with some of the work that I do as well, because there's a, uh, one of the expert levels uh, programs called Light Body. So when I do Light Body activations, it helps me to transmit that on another level. <gasps> Amazing conversation. I mean, I haven't used my Healy in so long, and a friend of mine, Karen, who also is a Healy, was like, she knew that I was feeling under the weather and she told me exactly, get out your Healy, here's the protocols to do. And I was all over it. Um, albeit using, I was like- Are you using, um, is it the coherence one? Um, she gave me a protocol to start. I'd have to make my way through all the different okay. ones. Yeah. There's, there's a program called coherence and then okay. there's another one. There's two, bio something is one. Yes. And then coherence is another one. Okay, I'm gonna write that down. I'm gonna do it because um, you know, it's it's an amazing little machine. Yeah, and and, and, I, and I'll tell you what you know for people who have uh, got, <laughs> what is it? who have uh, received COVID, they started taking the ASEA and cool. Um, so yeah, I'll tell you about that on the side. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Uh, thank you. And if you get it, if you're interested in the patches, I'm ex I'm exper I just ordered a bunch, and I can give you a link. Um, I know somebody, my partner, just started yeah, selling the M, them, and the, the M39s, right? Yes, I'm doing. I just ordered the X39, X49, and the oh the lord, Jesus. oh the glutathione. Um, yeah. And I'm yeah, I bought a three month supply because. I'm a big eye roller, Hillis. I, because there's so much crap out there. Like what you were saying, even with the people who do the solo retrieval. I mean, as it is with whether you're a lawyer, whether you are in the fashion industry, whether you're a healer, there's people who are amazing and full of integrity. And there's, mm, and same thing with products. And so, yeah. I mean, most of us get really tired of spending money and it's like nothing's happening. But um, somebody gifted me with these patches. Wow. And I, I was like, okay, that's crazy. I don't have to understand a thing, but this just created so much difference in my body, mm -hmm. so much ease. And so I'm like, I'm in. They said they suggested um, 
for what's happening with me, do a 90 day protocol. And they broke it down and said exactly how to do it. Somebody work with me. And I'm like, yeah, I'm totally doing it. So awesome. that's another thing. You're a Sia, the Healy, the patches, they're all beautiful. And so we want to know her. Connect. Exactly. And then your amazing abilities, like how can you go wrong? I mean, I love that. Dude. And, and I'd say the, the greatest joy that I, that I receive are seeing the transformation in my clients. I mean, and, you know, it's interesting how people come to me. People come to me, they find me. And then along the journey, we become friends, you know? And, and I think that's what makes this more magical because you take a complete stranger, you know, someone who you had no idea that was going to walk into your life. And you allow yourself to be open to receive whatever this is that's coming through for you. And then you slowly embark on this journey of friendship. You know, it just touches my heart because I just had a, a, a woman who reached out to me. And mind you, I had no idea this existed. Um, but I was guided uh, late last year to create a profile on Thumbtack. Now, mind you, I didn't know that healers could put information on Thumbtack sites. So I'm like, oh, okay, I'll just do it. And she reached out to me and told me about her son. She's like, I'm contacting you because I want you to help my son. And I'm like, okay. And we talked. And, and little did I know that this woman was uh, birthday is the, in the same year of my mom who died, who transitioned almost seven years ago. And so this woman has never seen any energy partition, nothing. She's in like 66 at this time. And it just warmed my heart so much in the relationship that we have developed and just seeing her transformation and just how open she was. And just you know, seeing stuff like that, that's what lights me. Oh, you they're know? so lucky to have you. They really are. Uh, I get that. It's not many people. I also care so deeply about my clients, my book clients, and I, I invited a bunch of them to my birthday party, and it just transcends at some point. It's the service, but it's also, it's the love, it's the care, it's the connection. Yeah. And this, honestly, I think is a massive contribution to the healing of humanity and the planet right now. Yeah. So I, I just honor that you said that and that you be that. Yeah. And, and, you know, I just wanted to take this, this transcendence just one step further. And for my personal practice, I choose not to use the word heal. I only use, if I do use it, it's in the commercial sense, you know, because that way people widely have a better understanding of it. But I prefer to use the word nourish, nourishing or nourishment. Because when we use the word heal, it implies we're broken, you know, but we're not broken. There's nothing broken about us. Just that our experiences have allowed uh, different things to emerge in our energy, into our psyche. And so we just require the proper nourishment, just like the body. Before the body breaks down, we need the proper nourishment for the soul before the soul breaks down. And so that's what I do in the soul restoration. That's what I do in all the sessions with my client to deeply understand what it is in their life, get to the root cause, clear it out, be done with it so they don't have to do it anymore. You know, And I'm not saying that there are people on the planet that are doing this, but the way that I do it and the way that I connect is so much different. And so it just brings me joy that I'm able to connect in, in such a loving in a loving way to be of service to to everyone who reaches out. Hillis, this is Dare to Dream. So what are you next, Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams and goals? Oh my goodness. I'm so glad you asked me that. <laughs> um, I am presently working on a Lemurian uh, Light Energy Training Manual with my teacher, so that way I will be able to attune others to this amazing gift of love, more light energy. So that's gonna be happening sometime this year. I'm a little, I'm, I'm in step with the, the divine timing with this. 
And in addition to that, I am also working on uh, my Syrian School of Self Mastery, to where you can find videos and information about my teachings and what I do. And in the next few years, I have been given instructions, which I've already started working on, to buy to create, I don't know if it's gonna be a book or if it's gonna be like an oral project, I'm not sure yet, of uh, 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 Lemurian light codes or just light codes for humanity. So these are light language symbols that will be general enough, but yet specific for whatever humanity needs to help us get to the next level. Nice. Nice dreams and uh, good for you for listening to the call and the directions and where people can find you then taplink.cc backslash Hillis Pew. Yes, Thank yes, you for yes, coming yes. on the show today. It's been awesome. Thank you, Debbie. And I end today's show with this quote from Renee A. Souter. In a seemingly dark and troubled world, there are hundreds and thousands of light workers standing strong, refusing to dim their lights. Look for the light workers, they are all around you. Follow them back to the light. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger. Leave a comment, share this with somebody you know who will love the conversation. And next week's show is featuring Dr. Megan Rose. She's a fairy seer and an expert on spirit marriages and spirit lovers. Thank you so much for joining us today on Dare to Dream. It's been a pleasure as always to hang out with you guys. And don't just dare to dream, dare to turn all your dreams into your lightworker reality. <laughs>